Illustrative Math, Algebra 2, Unit 5, Lesson 3 is called More Movement. So our goals today, I can write equations to represent vertical and horizontal translations of graphs, and I understand the relationship between graphs and equations by describing horizontal translations. All right, so the first one, how can we translate the graph of A to match one of the other graphs? Okay, so I guess I'll just kind of go through all of them here. So um, if I were to trace A, okay, so to get to B, I'd have to go, I'm going to find a point that matches. So I'm going to use this one right here. I have to go right six. So B is going to be right six, okay. Um, if I wanted to get to C, D, E and F. So C would be down three, no, down, let's say I need to get this point down to here. So down five, left three. So I'm going to write down five and left three. Okay, to get to D, I'm going to go back to my starting point. D, I need to just go left seven. Oh, wait, I need to, D, I actually, D is actually a little bit different because if you look here, D, if you look here and you count this horizontal piece, it's one, two, three, four. And if I count here, it's one, two, three. So I don't think I could get to D. Um, it's a different... So it's not possible. Um, to get to E, E, I just go up six. And then to get to F, I'm going to go up three, right two. All right, so there you go. All right, so remember your transformation rules. So if I want to go up, I just add the number on to the function. If I want to go down, I subtract it. If I want to go horizontal, I have to replace x with x plus c if I want to go left. Okay, so left x plus c. If I want to go right, I have to replace x with x minus c. Okay. So, for instance, like, you know, if I had a graph, like, let's say I have, like, y equals x squared. Okay, that graph is going to look like this. There's my graph. So, if I want to find a new function, let's say I want to go left 3. I'm going to replace x with y equals x plus 3. Okay, it's like I hit cut and paste right here for this x. Replaced it with x plus 3. If I'm going to go up 2, I just add 2 on there. Okay, so if you need to copy this down, um, it's very helpful. So I want to put that somewhere. All right, so remember the bakery where the thermostat was set to 65 at 5 a.m. The temperature in the kitchen rises to 85. So here's my 65. They turn on the ovens, um, and it rises up here to 85. And they keep the ovens on, and then they turn them off, and it cools down and gets back to 65. It's obviously going to be hotter in the kitchen when the ovens are on because they're generating heat, okay? Um, so here's my original. So hours after midnight. So it doesn't turn the ovens on until 5 a.m. So right here at 5, the temperature starts going up. Okay. So Andre thinks when the bakery starts baking two hours earlier, that means I need to subtract 2 from x and that g of x is equal to h of x minus 2. How could you help Andre understand that error in the thinking? All right. So take a minute. Think about that.
So what I would do is I would look at specific points. So this is the new graph. I shifted left. So like maybe like look at this point right here. This is H. So we're going to say H of 6 equals 85. Okay, so when I go here, it's it's that point actually moves to right there. So it's actually G of 4. Okay, G of 4. To get that point in terms of H, it's actually equal to H of 6. Okay, so G of 4 equals 85. So what happens is G of 4 is actually equal to H of 6. Okay, they're both the same point. And if you think about it, it's actually equal to H of 4 plus 2 to get that 6, okay? So if you think of it like this, G of 4 is equal to H of 6, those two points. And then when you look and say, oh, well, G of 4 is equal to 4 plus 2. So that's going to make me think G of X is equal to H of X plus 2. It's always going to be two more on the right on H. Or you could think of it this way. If this is H and this is G, H is always two to the right of that. So this is always two more than, than G. Okay, so if I plug in four here, I'd have to plug in six. Okay, so, so it would be the four plus two. All right, next thing. The graph F shows the temperatures after a change to the thermostat settings. What did the owner do? So it looks like the owner, everything moved up five. I was at 65, and then it moves up. Well, actually, yeah, so, so it moves up five. So I would say he turned the thermostat up to 70. Let's say he turned thermostat up to, oh, I'm sorry, up to 70. And then since it, he doesn't turn the ovens on until six hours after midnight. So I would say that he also turns ovens on at 6 a.m. Because that point is at six versus here it was at five. And everything shifts up. So it's almost like he did this. If I were to trace this graph. It's almost like he shifted it up five and then right one so it looks kind of like that okay oh i kind of wrote that in the wrong spot whoops i would go right here for this question right expression f in terms okay so what happened here we shifted up five and then right one so Expression for F in terms of H. So I think that's going to be F of X. So you take your H and we go right one. So we're going to replace the X with X minus one. And then when I go up five, I just add five on. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this one. A piece of meat is taken out of the freezer to thaw. The data points show its temperature M in degrees Fahrenheit. T hours after it was taken out. So the graph M equals G of T, where G of T equals negative 62 plus 0.85 T. Models the shape of the data, but, in the, but is in the wrong position. So J to things change in the equation to J of T equals negative 62 times 0.85 to the T plus 75.1 makes a good model for the data. Noah thinks that N of T equals negative 62 plus 0 0.85 to the t plus 1 plus 68 is better. So without graphing, describe how Jada know each transformed each graph. Okay, so for this one, how did they transform? So I would say Jada, the only difference with Jada's graph is this. Okay, on Noah's, he changed these. So I would say Jada translated G up 75.1 
and then it looks like Noah translated G up 68 and left one, okay? Because this is, anytime you add a number on, it's up. And then when I replace my variable with a, with something plus a number, that's going to actually shift left. So this is left one. Okay, so number two, use technology to graph them. Who do you think is better? So I already went ahead and graphed them here. So you can use Desmos. So here is Noah's, here's Jada's, and then here's the original points. So I plotted all these points. I plugged them in manually. So, I mean, I guess you could come up with better reasons for either one. Um, you know, you could say Jada's starts off more accurate. Um, but then, you know, you could also say Noah's is off, way off at the beginning, but gets a little closer at the end. So there's different, different uh, reasons here. So I would say Jada's graph is more accurate at the beginning Noah's graph is kind of far off at the beginning but it gets more accurate towards the end Okay, so I mean, I guess it's just a matter of preference here. I would, I would probably say Jada if it was, if it was me, but um, hard to really say. That's why they have actually computer um, uh, graphing, and what they'll do is they'll come up with the best fit line, or best fit curve in this case that that will definitely be the best representation of the data. All right, so our synthesis, you're going to pick three of the functions to write equations for them in terms of one of the other functions. Okay, so they did C. Well, no, that's not C. Oh, I see. Yeah, it is C. So they did C in terms of B. So they said, okay, to get to C from B, we go left 9 and then down 5. Okay, so, so that's what they did here. They said, okay, if this is B... So to, to, to get to C, I'd have to take B left, 9, down 5, okay? So let's see here. I'm going to do, I don't know, let's do, um, I'm not going to do D because D is too long there. So I'm not going to do anything with D. I'm going to do, um, I don't know, let's do E of X in terms of C. So to get from C, I'm going to have to take, I'm going to pick a point here. I'm going to take this point. I'm going to go right 3 up 11. So I'm going to take C of, to go right 3, it's X minus 3. And then up 11 would be right there like that. Okay. And then let's do another one. Let's do, let's do, let's do E of X again, but this time I'm going to do it in terms of F. So to get from F, I have to go left two and then up three. So I'm gonna say X plus two to go left two and then plus three to go up three. Okay, and it says to do three. I'm gonna do one more. So let's go A of X. And since I already got it at F, I'll do it in terms of, do it in terms of F. So it's gonna be I need to go left two, down three. So X plus two again to go left two, and then down three would be minus three, okay? All right, so our goal is I can write equations to represent vertical and horizontal translations of graphs. And I understand the relationship between graphs and the equations describing horizontal translations. All right, last thing is our cool down. Describe the transformation that moves the graph of G starting with the graph of F. That gives you the graph of G starting with the graph of F. Express G in terms of F. So we want G of X equals. So what happens here? So it looks like I'm going to go to get there. Let's pick a specific point, maybe this endpoint. 
Looks like I'm going to go down one, two, three, and write one. So it looks like I go down three, write one. Okay, so so I'm going to take f. I need to go right one, so it's f of x minus one. That gives me the right one. And then down three is minus three. So I'm going to go right one, down three. And then this didn't come with me because I stopped tracing it in the middle. But there you go. All right. All right, so that's about it for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.